Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today in this video, what I want to go ahead and explain to you guys... Well, this is a little loud. What I want to go ahead and explain to you guys is pretty much re-rolling in Grim Dawn, how to do it effectively, how to do it efficiently. Now, the reason for this video is not like a min-max video or something stupid. It's just to help you guys out because I understand that playing through Grim Dawn and beating normal difficulty and then elite difficulty and then uh, ultimate difficulty and then going back and backtracking and doing the quests and unlocking the rift gates it can be very tedious and very annoying not to mention rep so with this video i want to try to help you guys out for the players who have played a little bit on their mains so let's talk about step one step one is if you look at your reputation when you are revered with a reputation a good way to get revered with a reputation is by doing the bounties at the bounty tables when you get the bounty just look at it in your quest inside your quest it'll tell you exactly where to go kill the target do like three or four of them if you can't find it remake the game do it again after you have done that you have the ability to go to the reputation vendors look at the last tab over here and you can buy things called mandates what mandates do is you transfer them to your other characters and it increases the rep gain by 150%, which means it is significantly easier to hit max reputation with your new characters. Why is that important? It's important because of things like augments and components. That's pretty much the bread and butter of every build. Well, sort of, because you need them on pretty much every build. Unless you're doing Crucible only, but that's that the, nobody does that anymore. So, uh, The next thing to note is... If you have unlocked the expansion, you have the ability to acquire something called a Savior's Merit. A Savior's Merit costs 120k. When you use it on a new character, it unlocks ultimate difficulty, which means it clears normal for you and elite. It unlocks attribute and skill rewards from quests on lower difficulties, which means there's literally no reason to go back to the previous difficulties, so it saves you like 10 hours of backtracking unlocks all of the rift gates on lower difficulties because it doesn't give you the devotion shrines which means you can literally just go back to the difficulties i know that's redundant from what i just said but anyway you can go back to those difficulties and just really fast go to all the shrines you can use like a shrine you know helper searcher to find that and it unlocks all inventory bags so you don't even need to worry about those quests now another thing is if you have completed Malmouth and you have revered in Malmouth, you can actually purchase experience potions, which double the experience you gain on your character. Now, these potions, really fast to show you guys where they are, you can find these potions over here. Teleport to the Steel Cap District. From the Steel Cap District, you're going to go to your right, and it's this vendor right here. If you look down here, you can see it right here is the Potion of Clarity. Now, one other thing I want to talk about with the new character is when you uh, when you are on your main character, so like this is my guy, if you really like your character and you don't really plan on re-rolling for like a couple days, maybe a week or something, depending on how much time you put in, um, consider farming Celestial Bosses. Celestial Bosses are like a secret tier of boss, which is a lot stronger than normal boss, like significantly stronger than them, uh, but they also drop items some of them do. Uh, some of them drop their own crazy good gear, and some of them drop leveling sets for new players. So basically, what does that mean? A leveling set looks kind of like this. So over here, I have something called a Lokar set, which I farmed from Lokar. I'll show you guys in a minute what to do or how to get to him. Basically, with Lokar, um, for using a four-piece bonus, which is this required for level one, it's also really good because, you know, we're starting off in ultimate, so any type of added benefit we can get will help us. Uh, this set bonus gives us 40% XP gain along with the 100% XP gain from the Potion of Clarity. Now, if you're not able to kill Lokar, you can just kill John Bourbon, which is previously in another quest, which you can get Gazer Man, which is still okay. It gives 15% XP gain because it's on a chest piece. So to do Lokar, you need to go to Google first off because I'm not going to show you in this guide. Uh, you need to complete the Lokar side quest. After you have completed the Lokar side quest, I'm going to show you guys really quickly how to get to Lokar. You are going to be going to the shrine located right here, which is where you had to sacrifice the minion for the quest. Oh, this is like a really Kappa Kappa layout. Wait, I can't go that way? Oh, I'd have to go through here. Okay, let's do that. Oh, 
Okay. Gazer man. Gazer man looks very obnoxious. But it's a cool MTX if you're that kind of person. <laughs> Lokar is pretty tough to fight. So don't try to do him on like a, a shitty character because you're going to get, you know, slapped in the face. Wait, can you not? Man, the terrain in Grimdon sometimes is very questionable. Wait, do I go this way? I've never... I feel like I'm definitely going the wrong... Oh, no, no, no. I've never been this way before. Oh, that's because you can't go this way. Grimdon Re! Okay, we go this way and we go down those stairs. Okay, click, go, walk. There we go. That's where we go. I will recommend that if you are going to low car, it's recommend to use a Horfrost ointment because the mobs inside the area, uh, there are some invulnerable guys and the invulnerable guys can freeze lock you without good freeze resist. And as you are frozen, you can't really leech because you can't hit and you can die pretty easily like that. So definitely try to avoid that. So here's the ethereal rift. Remember, you have to do the quest line or else this rift is not going to be here. From the quest line here, you're going to take this rift. After you have taken this rift, you can open up this stone door. Now, you can also farm the entire Dark One set. It's a set that can be target farmed out of this area. There's four mobs inside here that drop it. I do believe I've explained this in a previ previous video. It's these Rift Claim Adherents right here. The healers, dude. The healers. They're so mean. You will also have modifiers on this map, uh, since it is one of the secret areas, so make sure you pay attention to these here. For example, if one of them is like... These don't really matter, but one of them is like a 60% crit multi, uh, multiplier to low car, and that's something you may have to pay attention to if you're squishy, because if he stuns you, which he's got the ability to stun you for quite a long time, especially if you have no stun res, you can expect to get bopped pretty easily. So if you look at the map here, this is where you want to go for low car. You need to go to the left. You may have to clear this one time uh, to unlock this, but I'm not sure. Now you can watch me get wrecked by this plant because my resistances are fucked at the moment. Since I'm going to be swapping characters over. Actually, why are my resistances so fucked right now? Oh, there we go. Just my poison and acid since we sacrificed our relic. That skill's not ready. After you kill the root of all evil, it does unlock low car for you. And I'm not going to be killing Lokar in this video. If you want to see my previous video where I fight him, you are more than welcome to go check it out. He takes me a little bit to kill. This is killed. You take the Rift, and then you're going to go straight, and Lokar spawns right here. Uh, if you have a setup build, it's good to, like, for example, set stuff up, like Ravenous Earth. I can't do that and then you can just trigger the fight, and there's Lokar. Anyway, though, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Before I go, um, I do want to state one more thing because I forgot to show this. I want to show you guys the character I'm re-rolling. I wanted to play a summoner, um, but the thing about summoners is I've played summoners a lot in Grim Dawn over the five years. You know, I've come on and off to the game and forgot everything and came back. But there was a really cool summoner set that was something that I've never played before that I was really interested in. And it's called the Goal Set. The Goal Set, to highlight what it does, is it's basically built around big boy summons, which means you're going to be using Blight Fiend and Briarthorn as your main summons, which coincidentally is the exact character I'm playing, but I want to remake the character as a as a summoner. So, um, this allows for two Blight Fiends, which means normally you can only have one of them. So it's built around basically this big Blight Fiend here and this big Briarthorn here. And then you get an additional summon from the set bonus itself. And if you can manage to fit an offensive ability, then you actually get a Eldritch Web Weaver from the Gloves, which is basically chance on crit to proc it. It's very cool. It's going to be a full poison and acid character. And we're going to see how the character goes. 
But anyway, like I said, that's pretty much about it for me. So hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.